continue on the thought that we started a while back, but uh, uh, last time in Matthew 26, Mark 14, and Luke 22. Those are the three places where you're going to find the account of the Lord's Prayer in Gethsemane. So in Matthew 26, Mark 14, and Luke 22, we're going to be using Matthew 26 as uh, our, our text that we read here tonight, and we'll mention the other ones if you want to turn over and look at those as well. But uh, I, I hope and pray, and I've mentioned it several times since then, I, I hope that it was a help to you last time, I hope that it is continue to be a help, uh, will continue to be a help to you tonight, but dealing on the thought of going further in prayer, going further in our prayer lives. And so Matthew 26 and verse number 36, let's all stand if you will, and I'm going to read the verses here, the account of Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. Matthew 26 and verse number 36, it says, Then cometh Jesus with them and to a place called Gethsemane. And I give you this last time, I don't know if you wrote it down, but the word Gethsemane means literally an old press. A uh, place called Gethsemane, and said to the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, which is James and John, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further. Now that's where we're getting our thought of going further in prayer. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. And he, come, and he cometh to the disciples and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, what, could you not watch with me one hour? I, I think it's interesting this, this is this totally out subject, but each time that he, when he comes back, he speaks, even though there's three of them, he speaks to Peter specifically. And the reason I think that he does that is because just prior to this, Peter, that's when Peter stands up and acknowledges that he'll never deny him, and the Lord tells him that he will deny him thrice. And so I, I think that that's, that's, that's interesting. I won't preach it on tonight, but I think that that's interesting. There's three of them. There's Peter, James, and John. But he comes and saith unto Peter, What, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed, and to the hands of sinners rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doeth betray me. You may be seated, and I appreciate you standing for the reading of God's word tonight. Now, just quickly, last time that we dealt with this of going further in prayer, we talked about three things initially. We talked about the position which he prayed. Luke says that he kneeled. Mark says that he fell on the ground. And Matthew says that he falls on his face when he went a little further in prayer. We talked about that. We talked about how I believe it is. And I, I, I hope that if there's anything that maybe you have put into practice since the last time that we dealt with this, it is that very thing of actually hitting your knees and praying. We talked about it. sometimes we're guilty of praying lazy. Uh, we'll pray laying in the recliner. We'll pray, pray laying in the bed. Sometimes that might be the only position you can get in. I understand that. But if you're able, I believe there's nothing like hitting an altar somewhere, hitting your knees, whether it's beside a bed, whether it's an altar in the church, 
uh, whether it's a, a prayer closet maybe that you have, I believe there's nothing that shows a more uh, a humble coming to the Lord in prayer than that position of hitting our needs. And so we talk about the position, we talk about the passion in which he prayed. We talk about the persistence in which he prayed, that being uh, going back three times. And then we ended up talking about uh, the timing of his going further in prayer, the timing in his life, when uh, he went further in prayer. We said, first of all, it's a time when he was feeling pain. I believe we can apply that to our lives. When we're feeling pain, uh, as the pain of the sin of the world become pressing on him, uh, he went further in prayer. And I believe the same thing can go for us. Uh, we talk about when he's facing persecution. This is right before that he is betrayed by uh, one that has walked with him, one that has talked with him. And we understand the persecution and the torture, literal torture that he goes through as he, uh, uh, even before going to the cross, and then, of course, the torture of the cross. And so we talk about in times of facing per persecution, that is a time for us to go further in prayer for the Lord. And then we talk about finally in the timing or when uh, he went further in prayer. Uh, we talk about uh, the timing of it was a future parting, meaning this is the ending days. These are the ending hours of the Lord's life. And we talk about and I, applying that to our lives. These are the end times. These are the end days. I believe that we are the generation that will see the Lord's coming. I, I truly believe that. I, I may not see it personally, uh, but I believe the generation is alive and is going to see uh, the rapture of the church. And so, uh, so we realize we are in end days and end times and how we need to go further in prayer. If there's ever a time when Christian people need to, I guess, put the foot on the uh, put the put the foot on the gas pedal and go further, go a little bit deeper, and go more often even in prayer. I believe it's now because I believe it's in last days. I, I appreciate the, the the deacons meeting that we had tonight. We didn't really have, as you saw, a business meeting. We didn't really have much business to take care of tonight. But just talking about the uh, you know burdens that we have here in the church and and people we need to see saved and people that are deceived and and, and people and talking about family members and different things like that. It's caught up in all kinds of a religious mess and don't know the truth and people that we have. Uh, questions about it. I, I appreciate that, brothers. I really do. I, I appreciate the, the, the fact of even, even praying back there, we could feel a burden that we have, knowing that our time's running out uh, and lost people need to be saved. But let me say this and think about tonight going further in prayer. Uh, I, I was thinking about this. Most of the New Testament and the things and the acts that the Lord Jesus Christ did, most of it is a him revealing, uh, well, let me say him, uh, it's the word of God revealing to those and, and him revealing himself as his being God's son, him being God in the flesh. I believe most of the miracles that you see that he did, nobody else could do. Nobody else could raise a, a dead man. Nobody else could make a blind man see. Nobody else could touch a leper and, and heal the spots of a leper like he did. And I believe time after time through the New Testament and, and the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, see the Lord Jesus Christ proving himself as being God's only begotten Son. He was the one promised to come. He is the Lamb of God which would take away the sin of the world. Amen. But I think about this garden scene. Now, we know this about the Lord Jesus Christ. He's 100% God and he's 100% man. We talked about it before. I don't understand all there is to know about it, but I know that's true and I know that, that that's the way it is. But he's 100% God and he's 100% man. And I thought about this. There are times, although I don't think it is near as often uh, as he revealed himself to have the miraculous powers that only the Son of God would have. Uh, but there are times when he also reveals not just the fact that he's the Son of God, but then also his humanity. 
We read in the Bible that the Lord Jesus Christ at times, he was hungry. And so we realize that he was just like every other human being. He gets hungry. There's times when he's thirsty. And we realize he's just like every other human being. And that he gets thirsty and needs water. And we realize that also that there are times when it reveals that he hurts. Just like, just like human beings hurt. Uh, Jesus wept and different things like that. We realize that there are times when he grows weary and tired throughout the Gospels. And, and what that is, is that reveals to us, hey, we have a great high priest that can be touched with every one of our infirmities. He knows, let me say this, he knows if there's anything that, in, that would encourage you tonight, just get this one back, he knows everything that you face. Amen. He's not a God that does not understand. He's not a God that does not uh, know what you're going through. He has literally experienced everything that you will ever experience or you will ever come on uh, in your life. Doesn't that encourage you in your prayer life going further in prayer Amen. that you're talking to somebody? Hey, sometimes people mention something to me and they're going through something. I can't sympathize because I've never uh, been through that. I, I've never lost a mother. I've never lost a father. I've never lost a sibling. Hey, I don't know exactly what you, I've never lost a spouse. I've never lost a child. I don't know exactly what you're going through. But let me say this. The Lord Jesus Christ has experienced and felt everything that you will ever feel. And that encourages me. I hope it encourages you tonight. Amen. That you can pray to somebody who understands. I may not understand. Your, your best friend may not understand. Even your wife or husband may not understand what you're feeling. But I promise you one thing. The Lord Jesus Christ knows all and he can help all. But we see here that uh, we think about uh, not just uh, Jesus' physical endurance. But in the garden we're introduced to a, a portion of scripture where I believe it gives us the greatest revelation of not only what he endured physically as a human, but then also emotionally as a human being. I believe the garden scene here is one of the greatest places that we can look to realize that this is 100% uh, God and this is 100% man. And so we see here, looking at going further in our prayer lives and looking at uh, just some things and, and, and thinking about this thought here tonight, not, not when we should go further, but why we should go further. Why did Jesus? I mean, there's multiple times in the Bible where it says that he prayed. Right. He'd get away from his disciples and he'd pray. He'd get, a, he'd get alone somewhere. And he prayed. In fact, I believe if you look over, if you look over in Luke's account, in Luke chapter number 22, it says this. In Luke 22 and 39, and he came out and went as it was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. That phrase there of as he was wont means that this was something that he was accustomed to doing. He was accustomed to going out into the Mount of Olives. This is not the only time that he ever went to the Mount of Olives and prayed. But I believe that what we have here is a special recorded time that we can draw from and help us in going further in our prayer life. I think about this on why you say, well, why did the Lord, why did the Lord go further in prayer? Why should I? Why, why, why shouldn't I just be satisfied with where I am right. in my prayer life? Why is it that Jesus went further? Amen. We look here and the first thing I want to notice is this. I believe he went further because of the task that was at hand. The task that was at hand. You say, what task was that? What, what task is it that, that the Lord Jesus Christ that was so heavy upon him that his sweat became as great drops of blood. Why? What kind of task was he faced with where he become literally heavy and, and literally sorrowful just a matter of moment? Well, what, 
what is it? What was the task that was at hand? And I'll give you one task, and I believe that covers everything that was the task that he was going. And the task was this. The task at hand was this. It was his father's will. Amen. That was, you say, what, what, why should I go further in prayer? Why did Jesus go further in prayer? I want you to look at the task at hand. I want you to notice this. His father's doing, his father's will was the task of the very son of God. Just like any son should, any son should, any child should want to do his father's will. Jesus was all about wanting to do the will of the Father. Just like any child of God should want to do. Now let me, let me emphasize that. Any child of God should want to do. It is to be pleasing to God, his Father. And so we look here. I, I want you to notice this. So the, the task that was ahead. I want you to look first of all in, in Matthew's gospel. And Matthew, he says this. Matthew in verse number 39, he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, Oh, my Father, and he says this, If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. I want you to, I want you to notice this. He says, If it be possible. In Luke's gospel, verse number 42, Luke 22 and 42, he says, it says, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. So the first time, he, or, or, or one says, if it be possible. The second one says, if thou be willing, let this cup pass from me. And Mark, verse num, uh, chapter 14, verse number 36, Mark 14 and 36, and, and I've never noticed this before. But it says, and he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to thee. And I thank God that they are. All things. He's praying. He said, God, you can, Father, you can do anything. Everything is possible with you. Amen. And he says this. He makes this statement. Take away this cup from me. Amen. He said, take it away. One time he says, if it be possible... Another one records, if he be willing, and in Mark's gospel, he makes the statement, take it, you can do all things, take away this cup from me. But all of them, he ends up in saying this, nevertheless, all three gospels, after he says, uh, the, talking about if he be willing, if it be possible, or to take away, he says, nevertheless. That word nevertheless means this, but. Hmm. What it means? Right. Means but. Matthew, verse number 39 says, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Hey. Now, I, I, I said this last time, and I don't want you to get to, uh, me to paint the wrong picture to you. This is not Jesus Christ trying to weasel out of going to the cross. This is not Jesus Christ trying to weasel out of, of, of the responsibility of, of redemption's plan and his part. But he's saying if there be any other way to save all of humanity, please, this, even this hour, this place and time, I, 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 if it's possible, I don't want to have to go through this. Right. If you be willing, if there's any other way Let's, let's, let's do some other one. And then he says, if you can't, just, just take it away. Just take this cup away from me. But all three times that he prayed, he said, nevertheless, not as what I will, thou will be done. There was a task at hand. The task at hand was doing his father's will. Now let me say this about the task of the Christian and doing the will of the Father. Doing, I'm going to make a statement I want you to remember. Doing God's will is never the easy way. Right. Never. Amen. Somebody 
looking at me cross-eyed, and you either disagree with me or... Now, I, I know the Bible says this, the way of transgressors is hard. And it is. It's hard, isn't it? Hard to be in iniquity and sin. The ways of transgressors is hard. Let me say this. Doing God's will, being in God's will, wanting to be exactly where God wants you to be is never the easy road. Amen. Hey, that's right. If it was the easy road, everybody would be doing it. Right. There wouldn't even be a, a reason for me to preach and holler and scream and spit and slobber. If everybody, if the easy way was, well, I, I just, the easy way is I'll just do God's will in my life. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We, we'll, have, we'll never have a rebuking message ever again. No need to, no need to correct anything. Everybody's just doing the easy thing and doing God's will. But it's not that way. So why is that? I, I mean, even in, even the Canaan land experience, if you think about it, Canaan land experience, they still had battles. Still had to fight. They still had battles. Canaan land is a promised land. Canaan land is a, is a land, a, a type and a picture of victorious Christian living. Doesn't that mean that there's no fighting and, and no trouble and no mistakes and no failures? No. They still had to go in there and fight. They still had to go in there and battle. They still had to go in there and sometimes take a beating. But the thing was, if in, in that Canaan land experience, if they just took God in his word and went over there, they'd have been exactly where God wanted them to be. But instead they say, well, we don't want to go that way. Right. We don't want to go that way. That's why, listen, that's why there's more people. There's many on a broad way. And there's a few on a narrow way. Amen. You know why? Because broad way is easy. Right. It is. It's the easy way. Do what you want. Act like you want to. Go where you want to go. Say what you want to say. I mean, that's 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 uh, what most people look at is living the dream. But let me say this, God, the task at hand, going further in prayer, being in God's will is never the easy road. Right. Let me say this, it's the right road. Amen. It is the right road. Amen. Going to rain on the just and the unjust. You're going to have you're going to have sicknesses just like everybody else has. You're going to have problems just like everybody else has. You're going to have different emotions just like everybody else has. You're going to have different things come in your life and and sweep you off your feet, knock you off your feet, knock you down. You're still going to have to face storms. You're still going to have to face. Listen, we battle, we battle foes, and we battle the flesh every day. Every day, every day is a fight with the devil, isn't it? Right, Isn't it? Yeah. You say, well, preacher, I don't have that problem. I can do some checking up if you don't. Right. It yeah. is for me. Yeah. Every day is a battle with the devil. Oh, the right. foe of the Lord Jesus Christ. The foe of being in the center of God's will. The tempter, the accuser, the one that's trying to trip you up, the one that's trying to mess your life up. Every day is a battle. Him and then if the devil ain't bad enough, then you got your own self to mess with. Right. Yeah. Lord help us. Not an easy road. But it's the right road. I think about uh, the the things and the, the task that is at hand, being in God's will. The task, being about the Father's business, the task that Amen. God wants us to do. Right. I, I, I'm telling you, it, it's a reason for us to need to go further. Because there's, there's, listen, there's something that God wants everybody to do. Right. Everybody. Everybody. There's a task at hand. There's a reason to go further in prayer. I, I'd like to think this. I, I'd, like, I'd like to think this. I'd like to think that I pray more than anybody on Sunday morning preparing to preach. I really do. It'd be awful to be the preacher and not be praying about it, wouldn't it? You know why? Because... 
Because God has commissioned me with a task. Be God's man, God's message for God's people. Right. The task at hand. But nobody else, nobody else understands this other brother can. But literally, when I sat down, I, I did a little, I did a little test tonight. And uh, literally, when I sat down in my study, my golf work, when I sat down in my study, we got one of those oxygen meters that does your oxygen and your pulse. I put that thing on my finger, uh, my finger and my heart rate was about 51, 52, or something like that. I thought that's kind of low. I don't know. I might want to go to the doctor and get that checked out. <laughs> but, uh, but, by, but, by, but by the time I just began, began studying and reading, taking notes, and thinking about the service tonight, thinking about the message that God laid on my heart and different things like that, I slipped that thing on before I come out of the study and my pulse was up to 100. You know why that is? Because there's a great task in hand. Right. Say, so, well, it's just preaching Wednesday night. No, it's a task. Right. There, there's a, you know why it is that the, your heart leaps out of your chest when you begin to witness and talk to somebody? Because you're on a task Amen. for God. Amen. It's a great task. There, there's a reason why you need to go further in prayer. It's because of the task of being in the will of the Father. Let me say this secondly, and I'll, I'll, I'll get to the third one. I'll say this secondly, and I'll be done. The why. We should go further in prayer. First of all, the task at hand. Seeing that in Christ's life. Second of all, let me say this. The trouble in his heart. Amen. Why do I need to go further? Why do you need to go further in prayer? It's because of the trouble in your heart. <clears throat> There's trouble in Christ's heart. Let me say this. The Bible says in Matthew 26 and 37, He began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Verse number 38, he said unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. It was as if there was, if there was one more turn and one more turn of a or push of a button that he is going to die. Who else knows when you're going to die better than the Lord Jesus Christ? He said, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Here you hear and watch and pray. Luke's, Luke's account gives this. I'm thinking about the trouble of his heart. Pray ye that you did not enter into temptation when he was withdrawn and went by a stone's couch. Down down and pray. Verse number 44. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat were, uh, was as it were great drops of blood. Falling down from, the, from to the ground. He says, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Amen. The trouble of his heart. Trouble of his heart. First of all, let me say this. The trouble of his heart, first of all, is painful. He's literally crying tears. He is literally feeling pain, <laughs> agony, and heaviness. Just on the fact of the trouble of his heart. Hey. And because of that reason, he goes further than ever recorded in a prayer unto God. And so he says, uh, first of all, the trouble is painful. Second of all, let me say this. This is trouble that is pers that persists. Hey. It persists. It is a persisting trouble. Let me give you this real quick. Do you realize this? In the timeline of it, turn, turn with me John 13. John 13 real quick. Turn with me John 13. I want you to see this. I think this is something we don't think about in the timeline of events coming up to the Garden of Gethsemane. I want you to look at it. John chapter number 13. John chapter number 13 is summer ended washing the disciples' feet. Okay? Summer ended. Then he goes on the discourse of some of the most beautiful scriptures you'll ever read in your Bible. John chapter number 14, John chapter number 15, John chapter number 16, John chapter number 17. Nothing but the Lord Jesus Christ doing some talking to you. And let me say this, if you're ever a time in trouble of heart, if there's any scriptures I can direct your attention to, it would be John 
13, or 14, 15, 16, and 17. Amen. Beautiful, wonderful scripture to the Christian person. If there's, if, make a note of it. If you don't have a note of it, if you don't already know yourself, that is some great chapters to go to whenever you're troubled at heart. But in note, and, and, that, and, and then in John chapter number 18, verse number 1, John chapter number 18, verse number 1, and when Jesus had spoken these words, those prior chapters, 14 through 17, when he had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook, uh, Sedron, where was a garden, into which he entered and his disciples. So that is his entrance into the garden of Gethsemane. Now I want you to understand this, and, and tell me if this ain't the way that we are. Uh, like I said, he's 100% 100, uh, 100 God and 100% man. But tell me if this ain't the way we are. In the, in the chapters of 14, 15, 16, and 17, he gives some of the most encouraging words to his disciples. Amen. He tells them to be a good cheater. He's overcome the world. Amen. He tells them they're going to face persecution. He, he, tells, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house many mansions. And we're not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, and, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Where I am, there you may be also. Talks about John chapter number 14, I believe, also talks about my, he said, uh, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. I, I love that. If there's anything spoke to my heart here lately, when he says, my peace I give unto you, there's no peace like his peace. Amen. But he literally has just said these words. Enters into the Garden of Gethsemane and all of a sudden becomes heavy and sorrowful and troubled. And his soul is exceeding sorrowful and he's in agony. And I know it's the pressing weight of sin being, our sins being laid upon him. But is that not us? Is that not us? How sometimes we can be up like this and, and say, hey, and, and being a help to somebody else. That's what he's doing to his disciples. He's being a help to somebody else. He was helping them boys out. He, he was saying, hey, you boys remember this. I prayed for you. I prayed for you. I love you. I prayed for you. Everything's going to be all right. But then the trouble of heart comes and he goes further in prayer. It's, it's like that, isn't it? And that's the way trouble of heart works. Seems like it comes on all of a sudden. Yeah. Anybody else have that trouble? Maybe it's, the, the, the trouble with trouble, does that make it? The trouble with trouble is this. It comes on real quick. Yeah. It does. Comes on just like that. It comes on real quick. But it leaves real slow. Isn't that the truth? Boy, well, if I was in a mega church, they'd be, they'd be hashtagging that and, and they'd, they'd be tweeting that 10 hundred times. Trouble comes on real quick in our lives, but it leaves real slow. In fact, it, it took him three times. We talked about, we talked about last time about how he was persistent. In his prayer life, where he prayed one time, and hey, it just, Brother Jason, it just didn't settle in his heart like it, like he felt it had, uh, like it should have. Then he went back and prayed the second time. He come back, and it just things just wasn't settled up. And he went back the third time. He was persistent in his prayer life because trouble is the same way. Right. It's persistent. Right. Persistent. Keeps on coming back. Wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be good if you just conquered trouble and you never had trouble anymore? Right. But don't work that way. Why should we go further in our prayer lives? None of the reasons because trouble is persistent. Right. And let me say this thirdly, and I'll be done with this. Trouble is personal. Right. Trouble is painful. Trouble is persistent. And trouble is personal. That is the why. That is the reason why you personally. Now let me talk to every individual in here. 
You personally need a prayer life. Don't depend on mom and daddy to do all your praying for you. Don't depend on best friend or the preacher to do all your praying for you. You personally can pray. I want you to know that. You can pray. You're a child of God. You can pray. If, if your child is, you can pray. I don't care what the devil tries to tell you. You ain't good prayer or whatever he tries to tell you. You can pray. Right. You need to pray. The reason why it is important for you to go further personally in your prayer life is for the very reason that trouble is a personal thing. I want you to understand this and then tell me if, if, this, if this isn't the reason why. We we throw these disciples, I mean, we, we give them down the road for their, for their slumberness. I, I'm not excusing it anyway, but we, we talk about this morning at church Sunday. I can't remember the word or somebody. I mean, we, 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 we chew them up and spit them out. I mean, fools, of it, the Israelites and the disciples, and they not understand and all these different things. And we, we're the same way. But there, there's something I got a hold of that I never got a hold of before. And it was this. The way it is with trouble is it's always personal. Sometimes I know it affects a whole family. Don't get me wrong. Most of the time, trouble you face is going to be a person. Anxiety. Is that not the way anxiety is? You can be troubled, but it seems like nobody else is troubled around you. Right. And you start getting troubled because nobody else is troubled. Right. Is that not the way anxiety works in our life? I'm, I'm being honest, I've been there. Yeah. Been there. Is that is that not the way that bitterness works in our life? Hard feelings? It's you that's staying up all night. Do you that can't sleep? You see where I'm going with this? I mean, we we throw those disciples under the bus and we say, why could they not? I mean, Jesus asked him to say, could you not watch one hour? But the reason for our need personally to go further in prayer is this, is because trouble is always personal. Amen. It, it, isn't, it, isn't it something that you'd be so tore up about something and, and troubled about something, and you look over and, and your wife or your husband, <laughs> you ain't slept a week. You're crying, you're hurt. I'm being honest. You're crying, you're hurt, you're all worked up. They ain't nothing wrong with them. You know why that is? Because it's personal trouble. Right. Why we need to go further in prayer? Personally, have a revived, even we sung that song, revived, but a revived prayer life in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ personally is because the truck, the stuff that you deal with is you. That's the way Jesus was. It wasn't, hey, it wasn't the rest of them that the, the responsibility of, of doing the Father's will and, and the weight of the sin of the world coming on their shoulders. But he was troubled. He was sorrowful. He was anxious. Yeah, yeah. I said, I, I said I'm, I'm not belittling the Lord Jesus Christ. What I'm saying is this. He felt everything that you feel. Everything. Personally, and what he did was this: he just went a little bit further and prayed. He went, he got away from everybody. You know, he, he took the disciples so far, and he said, "Y'all stay here." And he took Peter, James, and John. They went on in a little bit further. It says that they stayed, and then he went about a stone's cast ahead of them, and went a little bit further ahead. Just got away from everybody and prayed a little bit more, a little bit deeper. And that's the reason that I got something else. I'll, I'll, I'll end with that. That's the reason, though. I almost understand. I hope this has helped. I hope this has helped you as much as it's helped me. 
I want you to understand, doing the will of God is not easy. There's a task at hand. Being about the Father's business is not an easy business to be in. It's not, a, it's not a, 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 an, an easy thing that God wants us to do. God didn't just save us to just be saved and go to heaven one day. There's a task. There's a task at hand. The task in Jesus' life, he went further. It's trouble in his heart. And I, I, I'll say this. I, I'm telling you, I know some people struggle with it more than other people, but everybody has trouble. I don't care. I don't care who you are. Everybody has trouble. You, if there's one thing I encourage you to do, and it's great to have people pray. Hey, would you pray for me? Is that not? Is that not what he said to disciples? Would you just stay and watch and pray? Would you just watch and pray? And they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. I, 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 I it's because it's personal. As many examples I can give you, but if if something's going on with my child. I'm going to be tore up that night. And I, I may call Brother Mark and say, Brother Mark, you help me. You help me pray for my kid. I, I'm going to have sleepless nights. I'm going to be troubled with soul. I, I'm going to be exceeding sorrowful. And he may pray for that, but he, he ain't going to lose sleep like I'm going to lose sleep over it. And the same way with you. A lot of times we don't understand why everybody ain't tore up like us. It's because you're troubled. Go further in prayer. Let's, let's just end tonight with altar prayer. Everybody can and will.